The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's Keep Your Mobile Workforce Secure from Any Mobile Workforce from Any Disruption webinar. I am Eleanor Oliva, the Marketing Manager of WatchGuard Southeast Asia, and I will be hosting today's session. I'll be handing over to Yutai Pat, who will be delivering today's session. But before I do, I just want to cover some basic housekeeping items. Everyone is on mute, so if you have any questions during today's session, please use the question tab in the tool menu, which you can see on your screen. One of our team will be to answer, will aim to answer as we go along, and we will also have plenty of time for a Q&A at the end. We do capture all questions and we will do our very best to answer them. Without further ado, um, over to you, Pat. Okay. And you pass me the uh, presenter. Yes. Okay, everyone see this screen? Yes, no? Yes, we can see it. Okay. Hello, everyone. The, this is Pat um, from Thailand, looking after Cambodia, Thai, Laos. Uh, very, first of all, let me say it's very difficult time for us during the COVID-19 situations. Hopefully everyone stays safe and healthy. With, with the COVID-19, the way we work had changed. We, we actually see the change for quite many years now, but the COVID-19 situation have made it so fast that we have to change it today. For example, in Thailand, we've been locked down for almost since uh, early of March. So now we've been locked down in about a month and a half. Many of the restaurants have to close down. If people want to buy food, they can only do takeout. Tourism business in Thailand is pretty much dead. We dropped the... Uh, the tourist business, which depend mostly from Chinese people to zero, from Europe, from America to zero. A lot of people lose their job. The government is trying to help out on the economic, on the people who doesn't have income. A lot of business, a lot of small business now have to work from home because they cannot go to the office because of the, uh, the government policy. So we have to change the way we work from a normal office to mobile workforce. We are looking at the future that we have been talking about in the past three, four years, but it's happening today. There is a catalyst to change it. During the presentation, we will talk about how, what kind of business continuity plan we can develop to make sure that from the IT side, business will continue as normal. Also, we will talk about what Washka can offer to help make sure that plan become successful and some promotions, quick step that you can start using. Like I said, uh, when we're talking about the change, we heard about the word digital transformation. Digital transformation meaning many, many things in a different way to people. But the bottom line is 
it's transformed the way we work from what we are doing before more into a digital way of doing things. But who actually lead the digital transformation? In the old time, we may, we may say it's a CEO, CTO, or whatever. But today, the, the one that actually make the transformation is COVID. The problem with the transformation by COVID is it's not by choice, which means some company will be ready, some company are not ready, and they will most company will try to get the business funding without thinking about the security side of the uh, technologies. The future of working and learning is now. Right now, we are exper experiencing the largest global scale of work from home situation. People are looking at the business continuity plan, employee safety, uh, the way that things are done are changing. In Thailand, when we first start having the uh, work from home, many companies start to realize that some positions are no longer essential. For example, receptionists, seeing there is no one coming to the office, receptionists no, no longer need the way we do billing, the way we recruiting people, the attitude of people of working from home are different than the attitude of people who actually going to work at the office. So that's the new experience that we never had before. There are school for the children in Thailand right now, all school are closed. Some school are able to offering online learning. The questions come to when you learn online, how participate, how, what is the, this is a different experience from actually being in the class and have the face-to-face uh, -face interaction. How is a student gonna take it? How is the school, how is the teacher will be able to respond to this? and the examination online. How is that gonna be done? Some school in Thailand now, they start talking about doing a, a teacher who give individual student a call to do a verbal examination. So the learning experience also changed during this work from home crisis. But, Eventually, the COVID situation will cease. However, will life will be back in a normal way? Of course, we can go back to work in the office. Of course, we can go to school and learn. But I'm quite sure that many businesses will see a different way of doing things from the experience of the situations today and some of the way we do things will be changed forever. Let's take a look at what is consists of business continuity. These are some of the uh, main things that we would like to, to show you. If you look at the, the bottom size here, this is a link where you can actually get the sheet that Washcard has been providing. First, does your company have a work from home policy? It doesn't have to be work from home policy, it could be remote working policy. If you don't already have one, you may have to put in one. For example, in the beginning of the work from home crisis in Thailand, many of the, many of the business asking their IT staff to help the employee to be able to work from home. However, one of the very interesting things come up during this uh, work from home situation is, how can I tell if my employee is working? 
that's a tough question if you don't actually see the people. So many of the many of the answer will respond with some software, some kind of uh, tool. But at the end of the day, the bottom line is is the result. Because either you work from home or you work in the office, it doesn't matter what or how you do it. At the end of the day, it's the result of your action. So have a work, work from home policy. For example, of the policy that uh, I would recommend is help desk. If the people who are working at home having issues con connecting to the application, how they contact the, uh, the help desk. If the people work from home uh, need something or have problem with the virus or anything, how can they do it? Because they cannot just turn around and talk to the person sits next to them. Second thing is, if you have the work from home policy or if you already developed one, how would you communicate the policy and set the right expectation to the, the two people? Because now you cannot just call them up uh, to the office and talk about it in the meeting. It would be something different. Uh, the equipment ready. If people have to work from home, do they have the necessary device, telephone system? laptop before when someone call you or you call some uh, when, when someone call you at the office they call your office number if they call if you are now working from home would, would that telephone number we be translated into your home number or do they need to call your cell phone and if they call your cell phone how is it going to be tracked who's taking care of the expenses the device the laptop, the desktop, or whatever needed to be able to get access to the digital information. Are those employee owns or is it company provided? The difference between employee owns and company provided is the policy that you can control on the device. For example, if employee using their own laptop, how what about the license on Windows? What about the patches? What about the antivirus software? Uh, whatever needed to have that device compliance to the company policy. Who's going to be taking care of those costs? The internet, inter uh, internet connection are quite important. How? Is it enough, the bandwidth, is it enough to be able to do, to get the employee to do the job from home? If they need to get into the system, the safest way and cheapest way is using VPN so that all the information sent between the device and the office are encrypted. Does the company have enough VPN license? How to implement it? If the user using the VPN and having problems connecting, would they know that it's the username password issue? Is it the bandwidth issue or other thing? Does the employee or is it have the sufficient internet access to perform the job? If we start doing uh, video conferencing, do we need to see their face? Would the camera on the laptop be enough? Or do we need to have uh, a better camera installed? How about the microphone, the speaker? Just other than this, at the end of the day, communication is quite important. And when you are not face-to-face -face communicated, it's become more difficult to understand. Have you identified the remote employee to have access to the system or platform required to perform, perform their jobs? We'll talk about this in, in, in more details on, on the next slide. Is your company able to provide secure access 
before when we're talking about security for the corporation for the company it's quite easy anyone who come and work in the office is going to one door we put a firewall protecting that wall no one can from out if we implement the right policy using the right technology there is no threat we can prevent it now everybody's strategy all over the place there is no one door anymore how can we help and protect those risks with the remote worker? The budget. Do you need to make the adjustment to your IT budget to deliver? Can you have, do you have emergency budget to do it now? If you need to buy, tele uh, buy, buy more phone, you need to buy laptops. Do you have the funding? Can we rent? Or what are the solutions for short term? And long term, what can we do? And last one, I think, is do you need to offer remote work security training to your staff? Okay. Have you identified if remote worker have access to system or perform required to success successfully perform that job? Basically, we are looking at on a digital term, we are looking at two ways of accessing whatever needed to get the job done. Nowadays, we're talking about cloud-based application. Are we communicating to, uh, with email? Are we using Office 365? Or are we using Exchange? Exchange would be a corporate local internet. Cloud-based would be Office 365, Google's. How we communicate, Microsoft Team, Zoom, GoToMeeting, Google Meet, WebEx. The, 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 the cloud-based application, if the company have already been moved to, would be something that is useful because you don't need to have a VPN. You can access anywhere. You don't have to worry about infrastructure because it's been done by the provider. However, if you have your own application, if you have your own share file system, a payroll, ERP, HR, then remote worker need to be able to access those systems either through a VPN, remote desktop, or whatever necessary, necessary means. One of the things that, that come up during the COVID-19 uh, web video conferencing. The most popular one that people pick up was Zoom. In the past 30 days, meaning in, in March, there were 90% of downloading on Zoom increasing. Part of the reason is because it's free. It's very easy to use. But there are some problem with Zoom video conferencing. There's some issue. If you read about it, one is in the beginning, Zoom was able to, Zoom will provide the user login to Facebook and sell the information. Zoom can be hacked. So while you're having a meeting, someone else can drop in and listen to the meeting. There were cases in the school where they use it in Europe, having a class, and then the session was hijacked. How do we prevent it? Of course, we don't know if the situation will last forever. Do we want to invest and start uh, paying for the applications that may not be using after three months? That's something that we have to think about. But if we are using something free for now, how is it that we can use it effectively and securely? Washgat has that answer for you. Is your company able to provide secure measuring to avoid cyber attack? Remote connection. If let's say if you are using remote desktop for your HR to be able to go, or your accounting to be able to go and do payroll system for 
from home. If you're not using VPN, if the system does not support remotely, you may have to use remote desktop, meaning they have a desktop at the office, turning on accessing the information, the system on the uh, payroll, and then accounting at home, access that remote desk, uh, that desktop, pretend to be in the office. What happened if there was some leakage on password, on user? So all your information, all your data will be hijacked and people will be able to access all the information on the system. You're talking about the lost device because now the device is no longer in the office. If remote worker using tablet within the house, it could be kids that just borrow the device, use it to do online learning. Some information could be leaked. How can we secure those devices? A desktop computing, taking home is not properly configured. Some company in Thailand doesn't have the budget for their staff to have a laptop. So what they did is they asked the staff to take the desktop computer and take it home, connect it to via the internet. So when you take it, the, the, the desktop home, connect to the internet. Usually desktop in the office have RJ45 connected to the computer. When you go home, if you don't have access to the, uh, close to the switch, then you have to invest in pulling the, the wiring, or you can turn that desktop into uh, Wi-Fi, putting a USB Wi-Fi in there, make it access the uh, access point. How secure are those access point? How secure is your information? You can do VPN split tunnel, where you separated your home traffic and a corporate traffic, so that you have secure, and fast connection at the same time. Weak password, credential related. How, how sh when, when we are accessing the application, either the, the cloud applications or the uh, office internal application, usually it requires username and password. As an individual, we also have some applications that are not work related. For example, Facebook, WhatsApp, Instagram. Are we using the same password that we're using for the office? And if we are, how strong are those passwords? How will we protect it? If it's got stolen, then your corporate information, your corporate network can be compromised. Wi-Fi. Like I said before, if you connect it to the internet via Wi-Fi at home, how secure are those Wi-Fi? How do you know that when you connect it, all the information is up going properly through your access point and not your neighbor or someone else's? Shadow IT. Shadow IT is something that uh, the term we, we usually find in manufacturing where they have a lot of user who are engineer who are capable of doing some techn technology stuff. For example, a company could say, you can access the internet, you can access the information to access point within the company. But with those access points, the company have a policy put in so they can control how you access it so that during the work hour, you cannot go through social media, you cannot do Facebook, or you cannot go to YouTube or using Netflix. Some people who have the skill, they can put in another access point unregistered to the company and bypass all those policies so that they can do whatever they want. It's a lot, it's already difficult to control those shadow IT within the organization. But when people work from home, 
the control or manageable on the technology that representing threat to the network of your organization become more. Sometimes people share password, their account, because they forgot their own password. Probably maybe because it's too difficult for when they've set up the password, they set a very difficult password. Or it could be that the company has a policy to change password every three months and they didn't change it. Or when they change it, they forgot what the, what is the new password. So they asked their friend, can I borrow your password so I can log in? Innocently, it looks like a simple and harmless request. But with individual account, company had set individual access right to the resource. If a salesperson asking for username and password from the accountant, by default, if they log in with the accountant uh, username and password, they will have the accountant right to access other information that sales do not have. So that's another thing that we should be worried about. Remote employee patch management can be controlled, can be enforced when they are device at home. So we, we are looking at a quick way on building this. First, we have to worry about the risks, like I said before, shadow IT, lost device, how to manage that the, uh, the system on the remote have the correct patch and update patch, the correct one, the virus definitions and all of that. We have to lay out a loop and guideline to accept the application that are used for the company. Employee work at home should not be using other application when they see fit, because it could it may not be as secure as it's supposed to at running a risk of losing data from the company. Using a secure VPN connections, delivery securing security awareness. Help desk, remote desktop, support remote worker. Those are some of the simple things that we start using so that we can accomplish work from home. When uh, I'll, I'll show you a couple of samples on multi-factor authentication, what they are, why you should have it, and phishing. First, a groundwork for working from home. Assuming the company or the, the employee already have bandwidth, internet access, then client device, workbook, laptop, desktop, uh, whatever it needs, then we need to provide them a secure way to access the internal information. So let's start with VPN client. There are three ways you can do VPN clients. I'll show you the example of difference in SSL VPN, IKE V2, and PSEC. Then we're talking about personal firewall when we have, when we are in the office, we have a firewall implemented in the office. When you're at home, you should have a personal firewall that have the same or similar policy that the company set up. And then we protecting the identity by using multi-factor authentication. So when you log into the system, you can re-verify that it is you who are logged in with another layer of protection, not just using the username and password. And then phishing, right? I show you example what it is, where with the WashGuard DNS wash code, we can do phishing protection, content filtering on the layer of device. And the last one, which is not, not, it's not something new. It had been around for a long time. We heard about it is ransomware. 
you can protect it with TDR or threat detection and response. So with WatchGuard, we have devices, appliance, in three, uh, we have firewall in three different versions. You can have a hardware version. The top one are this, the T-Series. This is a desktop side. And the bottom one are the uh, rack mount side, which is an M-Series. You can look at the uh, number of VPN per box. We start from 5, 20, 35, 60. When we're talking about VPN connection, we're talking about concurrent VPN connection. So if your company have 70 people need to connect it to, to the office, but not at one time connected, but only 60 people connected at one time, then you can go with T70 for the VPN. Second choice is you can have the, uh, the virtual. We have what we call a Firebox V, which is a virtual. It's downloaded, you configure it on a VM. It gives you the VPN access, and you can use that to access to your company. This is what it shows the difference between the three different types of uh, VPN access. The one we recommended is IK EV2 because it's, uh, you have a very good speed, especially in Cambodia. I've been to Cambodia, I see that the internet access speed itself are not quite as fast compared to Thailand. The stability, the problem with the government shutdown, the, the electric during the day, uh, this is this is how you can how you can connect it. For more information, you can go to this link to see more. The slide will be sent out later. Personal firewall will give you a protection zone on your endpoint when you're not in the office. Uh, with the VPN from from WatchGuard, you can you can have the VPN client as well as a built-in personal firewall on your endpoint. So that make it more secure when your employee work at home. MFA, multi-factor authentication. I have two, uh, two links here. One is showing you how to set up a VPN. The other one, uh, how to set up a VPN with multi-factor authentication. The second one is telling you what an MFA is. What can you use it? For example, you can use MFA on VPN terminal. If your company using a firewall and you have a VPN connection to a firewall, doesn't matter what type of firewall it is, it could be Washka, it could be Fortinet, it could be other brand. To have a secure VPN, you can enable multi-factor authentication our off-point multi-factor authentication can work with any brand firewall. No need to have WatchGuard firewall box. Okay. If you're using cloud application like Office 365, Dropbox, you're using Zoom, we can use multi-factor authentication off-point to re-verify the correct identity of the user. It can also help protect the unauthorized user from access to your computer. When you first turn on your computer, there is a window lock card. We can use off-point multi-factor authentication to make sure that you are who you said you are. So if a user lose their laptop uh, device, someone who found it cannot gain access to your computer. We can also do the secure single sign-on website for multiple application. So user doesn't have to remember every single password for all the application. And of course, we can do a secure ERP, B2B and B2C portals with a point multi-factor authentication. 
this is a website that WatchGuard had created by what we call it is a dark web scanning. It being disabled for temporarily for now, we did some improvement internally. We will reopen it again. The purpose of the website is if you read the news about company got stolen database from a hacker, either from a hotel, education, healthcare, Facebook, Yahoo, and all, all that. Those information will show on a place called dark web. You can go to a dark website, you can buy username and password database from all over the world. They're at very cheap price. So watch got creating a website called dark web where you can put in a domain name that you want to know. Let's say if this is your domain, you put in a domain name and scan it. WatchGuard will tell you that your domain have any account bleached or not. In this example, this is a education college in Thailand. From the scan, it show 187 account from this domain have been bleached. School will have more bleached because of this student. If you are the owner of the domain, you can find out, you can click on find out more, re-verify your email that you are the owner of the domain, then Washka will send you more details on those 187 accounts. What are the bleach? What should be done? But with the uh, with the with the multi-factor authentication. With the off-point multi-factor authentication, we can help protect this. Even the account and password already been sold and known. If we enable multi-factor authentication, they can use your account. They can put in the password, but they cannot access because the second verification will not go to them because you are using off-point multi-factor authentication. This is the, uh, the link. Once it's be available again, you can access and see the information for your own domain. There, last year in December, one of the companies in Thailand, it's an oil refinery, losing 700 million baht to fishing. Apparently, this company was infected with some malware and the malware was in the system for quite a long time. It detect and learn how email system communicated within the company, who are the supplier, who are the vendor, who are the uh, accountant, what are the content of the communication. So once they start learning and understand all that information, hacker sending an email to fool the accountant so that the accountant transfer 700 million baht to a hacker account without knowing. This can be protected with DNS watch code on the end user device so that user would not go to a wrong website that is not the right one. This is how it works. DNS watch level detect to block connection to a bad guy. We have a list of websites. We know which one are legitimate, which one are not. Even though users see the, the website has the correct name, but when they click on it, it could take users to a different place. And with the information request on that page, user can provide information that would be harmful to the company. With the NS watch goal, we can help prevent that. This is something that keep happening in Thailand, time after time after time. Is guys, my file extension had been changed. What can we do about it? 
And after look at it, it was done because of ransomware. With the with the work from home, we are using devices outside the company. They are running higher and higher risks of getting infected with ransomware. WatchGuard has solutions. If you are already using WatchGuard Firefox, you have a choice to implement it, what we call threat detection and response or TDR for short on the end device, providing you are using Firefox with the total security suit. If you are using the basic one or the standard one, you can buy an upgrade without changing the hardware and start implementing and using threat detection to prevent any ransomware on the end device. So with that, we are here to help. If you need VPN connections, you don't have the, you have the watch guard Firefox, you can use the VPN on the Firefox. If you want to increase the number of VPN, you can buy the same model of WatchGuard Firefox that you have. Set it up in the act in the cluster environment, active active. That will double your VPN connection. You can look at the slide I show you the number of VPN connection per Firefox model. If you think this is going to be temporary and don't want to spend money on the Firefox, you can download it and using the virtual fireware that is offering for 120 days during the COVID-19 crisis. For multi-factor authentication, DNS Watch Go, we also offer 120 days free of charge. You can implement it, use it to protect it. If you like to buy, because you see this is important and in fact, it will be a long-term uh, protection on the security and device. You can purchase it with a very good discount during this, this time. So enjoy yourself, stay at home, and watch that. Help protect on the security side. Be safe and stay healthy. Back to you, Eleanor. Thank you, Pat. Um, everyone, is there any question from our audience here? Else, if you don't have any question, um, we're going to um, end the webinar, but then thereafter, you'll be uh, receiving an email from me. You can also send your email to any of my team and we will have, have you covered. Thank you everyone for today's session and stay safe and stay healthy. Thank you guys, bye-bye. Thank you, bye-bye.